When I was in school, I used to think if you just understood some area of technology, uh, that you should just start a company because, you know, profit. <laughs> and uh, then I realized, oh, you know, you actually need to know how to sell things to people too. And so then I thought, you know, if only you understood a technology and, you know, a market that you might sell it to, you should start a company. And then I, see other, I saw other companies not really succeeding with that model either. And it was really when I joined Epiphany, um, which was my first startup that I joined, that I realized these guys, they understood a technology, they understood a market to sell it to, but they also knew how to build a company. <laughs> it was uh, this new skill that I hadn't even kind of understood before, um, you know, as a more academic. Um, so I, I think if you've got those three things, you know, your chances are pretty good. We kind of understood the market. We understood how to develop a sales force, go to market around that. Uh, we kind of understood how to build organizations, build teams. We had done that before. Um, maybe the, the big bet with rocket fuel was really around the technology. Like, could you really just build an autonomous AI system with no human intervention that would be studying you know, planet scale uh, consumer interests and, uh, and understanding you know, for basically any style of product, when is the right time to get you know, this person's attention uh, for ice cream or a luxury car? Um, so that was kind of a big bet, and people thought it was a little um, insane. Um, many people thought it was impossible. They thought you wouldn't be able to afford the computational power and storage you would need to really pull that off at scale. Um, so I think for us, I would say technology is, has been the biggest driver. David Letterman has this little comedy bit uh, once a while ago. It was, uh, this little uh, Western song, it was called The Strong Guy, The Fat Guy, The Genius. <laughs> and they, together, they, there was nothing they couldn't break or eat or know. Um, so for us, I think it's, um, for what we're trying to build, um, you know, we sort of have uh, the big data guy, Abhinav, the artificial intelligence and sort of company scaling guy is me, and then um, the digital media guys are co-founder Richard. And so the three of us together, I think, um, initially, you know, it just made so much sense to investors. Yeah, these, these guys know kind of the different aspects of what they need to put together to create a success. Um, and uh, we had all been successful in the past, but we'd, we had worked together in the past also. And so I think that, that one way or the other, either choosing co-founders that you've worked with and already trust or spending a lot of energy kind of you know, doing dating basically, you know, uh, because it, you, know, you really, it's, it's imperative to kind of react to the world quickly, um, to be able to tell each other, um, that's not working, you know, we should do this instead. I, I think in the early days we had a, a number of you know, venture capital meetings that didn't go very well, uh, but we would just be honest with each other right out of the meeting, okay, this thing that you said, I don't think that worked, you talked too long about this thing, and, and we got better fast, and, and because we had this trust of you know, working together for years uh, before. There's sort of like this umbrella of, uh, you know, just sort of positive, right, meaning positive revenue growth, you know, awesome technology, awesome customer feedback. These things kind of, you know, snowball on themselves. It's a nice uh, kind of flywheel effect. Um, right now, for example, salespeople often come because uh, they've been competing with us in the market and our product just crushed whatever product, you know, they were selling. And so it's interesting to come and represent that product. I think maybe for every position, you know, you kind of have to think of it, it's almost like selling, right? You're selling a career to someone. and you know, whenever you're selling in the market, you think about what's your, you know, your USP, your unique selling proposition or your differentiation. And so for every role at Rocket Fuel, we've thought through, well, what, what is the, why is it better to be an engineer at Rocket Fuel versus somewhere else? And just for example, on that one, it's, um, you know, Rocket Fuel, it almost has hedge fund-like dynamics for the software, meaning, like, if you can come and you can help build a model that's 10% better at predicting uh, when is, is, uh, an ad is going to get a response and in some context, um, when we you know, hit the button and deploy that to the, the servers around the planet, like instantly uh, either we're generating better results for our customers or more economics for ourselves. And so that's kind of cool relative to being an engineer at a kind of company where you, know, you work on this new feature, maybe marketing mentions it on the brochure, maybe they don't, maybe sales talks about it, maybe they don't. You don't know, you, know, you can't measure your impact. And so I think engineers love to know that they're making an impact on a company. And so as an example, that's sort of our, our USP for engineers. Everyone's trying to uh, raise their game and scale you know, with the enterprise, which is hard. Um, you know, we were, had many years more than doubling uh, our revenue and our employees and so forth. Um, so um, you know, it's, we got, uh, some things are kind of standard, you know, we get coaches for everyone. Um, uh, some things are kind of just rocket fuel in terms of uh, just being really open with each other around things that feel uh, broken. Um, you know, there is uh, some incorporating of talent from outside. We didn't, we're not the kind of company that is always 
hired people on top of our existing people, right? We've really let our people grow, but of course, as you're growing, you can hire people within the organization that have experience at a larger scale, and there's no law against asking them, hey, you know, at Facebook, <laughs> how did you solve this problem? Or at Google, how did you do it? Or at Microsoft, right? So you can incorporate a lot of experience, uh, not always by hiring, you know, uh, new bosses for everybody, uh, but just by augmenting the team. And I think we all have, um, you know, mentors, other you know, advisors outside of the firm as well. Last year, uh, we hit, um, you know, at the end of the year, about a quarter billion in revenue, and um, we really felt like uh, we were we had pulled ahead of our competitors in terms of um, scale and uh, reputation. Um, you often look at the IPO as a way to kind of solidify a brand's reputation as now you know, you're kind of a real company. Uh, you've arrived, and um, I think that that helped. I think a lot of companies um, uh, took us more seriously uh, you know, once we had gone public. A lot of that is around uh, just viewing the, the startup itself as an experiment. It might work, it might not. Um, you have to just honestly kind of incorporate data that the world gives you about whether it's working and try to adjust. Um, uh, that's part of it. I guess um, that relates to kind of post-inception maybe, kind of how you iterate from there and try to find the right market. Um, I would say, you know, the, at the inception part, um, you know, on the one hand, I think everybody loves an entrepreneur and you, all, you want to kind of support everybody. Um, but you know, you do kind of have to have sufficient power to kind of have some sort of escape velocity and just kind of, you know, have a high chance of success. Um, right now, uh, the only private companies I've joined uh, were Epiphany, Salesforce, and Rocket Fuel. So all companies have gone public and you know become uh, fairly large. And I think they all had like really strong, uh, you know, stories, uh, really strong people uh, behind them, uh, some really strong differentiation in the product. And uh, very early customers were just amazed at the results they were getting, uh, and or the you know the features that we were able to deliver. So I think you want something that can be you know big like that, and you want to kind of look at your assets even before deciding let's start this company together. Uh, you want to kind of look at the assets you're bringing and, and ask yourself, I think, can this be big? Because um, it, it's um, I mean you can waste. It, it's funny. I have a friend who's um, started a company uh, and became CEO at the same time I joined Epiphany. And I ran into him at a conference and I said, you know, I, I, now that I've done this, I wish I'd done it sooner. Uh, meaning start a company with some friends. And, uh, and he says, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> so, I mean, his own company was just a heartache and woe, you know. Uh, you know, it didn't really uh, excite customers. Lots of tensions and sort of lost nights of sleep, uh, you know, worrying about the board and funding. And so, um, you know, it's not always, uh, you know, uh, rosy. And I, so I think you can increase your odds by... Um, you know, being a, a little bit delivered and thoughtful and, and really trying to understand, you know, do we really have uh, what it takes here in terms of kind of strength and power um, to enter a market, build technology, build teams, uh, to create a success. Mm -hmm.